I've navigated to reggieashworth.com where you can see they have on sale AppDelete, AppDelete Lite, along with two other fine applications. As I mentioned in the introduction, AppDelete Lite is available through the Mac App Store, but it is severely limited by the restrictions of sandboxing that Apple has put on, so it actually cannot delete anything. It is still an interesting application for certain uses, like finding the plist that's bothering an application of yours, or if you're okay with navigating directly to each of the files to delete them yourself, it can be useful. However, for the purposes of this video, we're going to concentrate on the fold version of AppDelete. Let me go ahead and tap on that. From here, you can download a trial, which again is another advantage of not going through the App Store. You can buy a license for $7.99. Let's go ahead and pop this down and get started with AppDelete. Let's go ahead and launch AppDelete from the Finder from the Applications window. When you first open up AppDelete, you'll see a happy little trash can asking you to throw something in it. Let's go find an application like, let's say you just finished watching my Great Drop Shadow video and you thought, eh, it's not for me. I mean, I'm sure everyone listening thought it was so compelling they're going to keep it, but let's try it just for an example. When I put Drop Shadow onto the icon here, you'll notice that the blue arrow lights up. When I let go, you can see all of the different files that would have been left behind if I hadn't used App Delete to delete this application. Only Drop Shadow itself would have been thrown in the trash if I had originally done it just by dragging into the trash instead of using App Delete. When you hover over each of the items, you get some information about those items. Remember I explained that sometimes there's a plist file that's causing some problems, maybe an application's crashing, and people tell you, well, just delete the plist file, and you're thinking, how do I find that thing? So if I hover over this magnifying glass and I tap, it's going to show me where it is in the finder. Now look at how far deep that is. Let me hold down the command key and show you that this is in a hidden private folder var db receipts. I mean, it's way buried down there. You would have never found that plist file without the help of app delete. I can also get a uh, get info window by tapping the I, and it's going to show you a little more information about it. Nothing I can understand, but maybe you can. Down at the bottom of the app delete window, you're going to see several buttons. We can cancel and simply do nothing at this point. Like let's say you just went and wanted to find that plist file and now you're done and you don't want to delete drop shadow, you could cancel and get out of app delete. I'm going to skip over these two buttons and come back. This is how you can delete an application. If I were to hit delete right now, drop shadow would go into the trash. I can also log what files are associated with Drop Shadow, but not actually do anything with Drop Shadow. And finally, one of the most interesting buttons is this Archive button. This allows me to take an application that, let's say I don't want to use for a while, but I think maybe I would want it later. I can have the application deleted, all of the files removed from their locations, but I can actually archive it so that I could get it back and reinstall it at a later date. Let's go ahead and uh, do something dangerous here. Let's go ahead and delete Drop Shadow. Even though it's one of my favorite applications, I'll show you we can recover. So I'm going to tap on Delete. It's going to ask me to authenticate. And this is the part that's not allowed by applications in the Mac App Store. You can't be queried for your password. You'll notice that Drop Shadow has disappeared. Luckily, I can go up to Edit, and I can say Undo and Authenticate again. I can see that it's there in the Finder, but let me put it back in and see that all of those files did come back. And they did. Let's try something else. Let's try the Archive option. So I'm going to tap on the Archive button, and it's going to ask me where I want to save it. The default location is in your Library, Application Support, and then under App Delete, there's App Delete Archives. I would suggest keeping it there, but make sure that you back up your library folder within your user account so that you can maintain this information. So let's say choose, and now I'm going to delete, and again authenticate. Now, if I were to go back to AppDelete, say, quite a while later, I can go under Tools, and I can say Install from Archive. It's going to automatically look in that same folder we just identified, and there's my AppDelete of Drop Shadow. Let me go ahead and hit Choose, and Authenticate again. And sure enough, Drop Shadow is back, right there. So that's how you can delete and undelete right within the same motion, or you can archive and get something back at a later date. 
If you like keeping things clean, you might want to go into your application support library and delete that archive file. Now, personally, I think AppDelete is worth the price of admission already, but there's more that AppDelete can do for you. Let me go ahead and close down our Applications folder. And when I go into AppDelete and under File, I can get access to more than just my applications. One of the ways to get to applications without opening a Finder window would be to simply tap on Applications, and it allows you to choose an application instead of dragging and dropping. Let's cancel it out of that. But what about these other things? You can install widgets, uh, otherwise known as dashboard widgets. If anybody has ever done those, you might still have some in your system. Maybe you installed them a long time ago and you don't use dashboard widgets anymore. You can go over here under user or main and take a look at what widgets you have actually installed. I went under main because I don't have any user level widgets that I've installed on this user account. But you can see that all of these are installed right now and I could choose to uninstall them. Let's go back and look at Preference Panes. Now again, let's go to Main this time. I've installed three different Preference Panes. Let's say I don't use my Wacom tablet anymore. I could delete this. Now there are other ways to delete a Preference Pane, but this is a nice way to see what you have installed to think about whether you actually still need those anymore. Again, let me cancel. Let's go back to File. And this is probably my favorite. Under Plugins, let's go to Main again. And look at all of the plugins I have installed on my browsers. I probably don't need all of those. In fact, just last night, I installed this plugin to watch uh, videos from Showtime. I couldn't tell you how to go find that and uninstall it if it hadn't been for AppDelete. So I could uninstall that right now. I'm going to go ahead and cancel. We'll save that for the student for later. Finally, under file, I can also go to screensavers. Again, I'm going to main in general because most of these are uh, defaults. So default collections, these are all the screensavers that are installed. Maybe you're trying to clean your system up and make it run a little more crisply. You probably don't need all of these files that are in these screensavers. Let me go ahead and hit cancel. Another way to do some discovery is with these four buttons right here. I can tap on applications. And it's going to bring up a list of my applications, and I could simply use this filter button down right here to search for Drop Shadow. That might be a faster way than navigating over to my Applications folder. I can choose how I search by name, by size, by kind creation date, and by last use date. The next button is for your dashboard widgets, and that one came up pretty quickly because those are fairly small. So again, I'm probably not doing a lot of skiing right now. I could delete the ski report dashboard widget. Next up is very interesting. This is called the Genius. And the Genius search is going to look through my computer and find out which applications I haven't used in the last six months. I think this is a fabulous idea because I always think, oh, I can't get rid of that. I really like it. I'm sure I use it. But you're kidding yourself. you got a lot of stuff on your computer that you don't use anymore. And if you're using a machine that maybe has severely limited disk size, this might be a great way to go in and find those applications that you really don't use, even though you think you do. Let me go ahead and say OK. And this message doesn't have to show every time. We could check that box. But let's go ahead and say OK. And this is going to take a few minutes, or a few seconds, I should say, while it goes through the computer and it's researched in to see when those applications were last used. All right, we're back, and you can see there are 88 items that it says I haven't used in a long time. As much as I'm excited by this feature, I don't think it's actually accurate on which ones I haven't used. Maybe it will surface some that I haven't used, but clearly I have used Drop Shadow in the last six months. So take it with a grain of salt. I actually haven't used Firefox in a very long time, so I'm sure I could get rid of that. In any case, it's a way of starting to filter, but don't rely on this 100% and say, oh, I can just check, 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 and delete all of those. Let's click the last icon here. This is a search for orphans. And this is a terrific way to find those leftover pieces that you might have had left on your operating system from before you learned about AppDelete. Let's go ahead and do a search for orphans. No orphans found. Congratulations, your Mac is super clean. Now, the only reason it says that is because I am a religious user of AppDelete, and I've done a new compave recently when I got a new machine. So don't feel bad if you find orphans on your machine, but you can use AppDelete to delete them. Now that I've motivated you to use AppDelete, let's set a couple of preferences that might make it even more useful for you. If I go under AppDelete Preferences, 
I can check a box here that says enable contextual menu item. Let me show you what that does. Let me open a finder window here and let's go in this view and look at some applications. With this box checked, it's going to put app delete in as a service. So if I right click say on Alfred, I go down to services, app delete is actually in this list. So now if I click on app delete, there it's gone through and found all of the files associated with Alfred and gotten it ready to delete. It's a very quick way of just jumping right into app delete if you enable it as a contextual menu item. You have several other options here. You can protect default apps. So those are the applications that came with your Mac. Maybe you want to make sure those always stay installed. You can protect running apps, which seems like a really good idea. I think I'll check that right now. And you can choose to launch app deleted startup. I'm not sure why you would. It comes up very, very quickly. I'm not sure what I would need that for. You can disable sound effects. It makes a nice little trash crunchy sound that I kind of like, so I'm going to keep that going. And let's say you're a Windows user and it drives you crazy that when you click the red button, it doesn't quit the application. If you check this, that will quit the application. We, of course, have our way to check for updates. And then under advanced, we have some hidden modes and uh, the ability to hide the menu bar icon and to disable trash monitoring. But I'm not going to go through all of those. I do want to tell you that I am such a fan of app delete that I do one more thing with it. I keep it in my menu bar. I'm sure Donna showed you in this past. Let me get this open a little bit wider. But if you take any application and you hold down the command key while you're dragging, you can add it to your menu bar. I keep app delete there all the time because I load a lot of different applications. I test a lot, as you can imagine. And at any given point, I can take an application and simply drag it onto that icon App delete launches and I'm ready to delete. Or again, look for that plist file that might be causing some problems on my system. So that shows you several different ways to launch app delete and use app delete to make sure your system stays clean.